Alright. Mic check, check, I'm good. So I'm Max Duran, Max, Max Duran, CWB Association Welding Podcast, Pod, Pod, Podcast. Today we have a really cool guest, Welding Podcast. The show is about to begin. Hello and welcome to another edition of the CWB Welding Association Podcast. Uh, Today we have a very special guest as a part of our awesome collaboration with Skills Canada. This is part of an ongoing series that we've been doing, and as you know, we have had many guests from coast to coast to coast. Today I have Brittany Mishak, known to me as B, from my hometown of Regina here in Saskatchewan on the show. B, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good, Max. Thanks so much for having me and the rest of the National Alumni Committee. I know that we're all really excited about this collaboration with you. It's been a lot of fun interviewing everyone, and I have been learning a ton. (laughs) Perfect. That's what we hope for. Yeah, you know, and that's the beauty of the trades is that even though I live within one sector of trades, every single person I've interviewed, and I'm sure it'll continue right to the end of this special series, I've had something relatable with them because of the trade. There's like the exchangeable skills, right? Yeah, exactly. So Brittany B, (laughs) (laughs) let's, uh, let's talk about what you did for skills. So you went into skills under graphic design and how did you get on that path? Okay. Um, so when I was younger, I really wanted to be an animator. And then when I looked into the cost of schooling and moving to Vancouver, I was a little bit like, maybe I don't want to go into that much debt, but (laughs) I still wanted to do something creative. So, um, I actually looked into schooling that was around where I could live at home still and whatnot. And Mm -hmm. I actually found a course at, um, Sask Polytech. It was not called that at the time, but Point being, I went to a two-year diploma course, and it was called Graphic Communications. So the first year, you learn everything about how to run a print shop, like you run giant Heidelberg presses, and how to mix paint and your ink and all of that sort of hands-on stuff. And then in the second year, you learn all of the actual graphic design things that play into the Skills Canada competition. Okay, so in the beginning, let's go back in time. You're a young, you know, girl and you like animation. Did you yep. like, and this can be various forms, animation is multi-layered, right? Did you enjoy the art form of animation or did you see yourself as a person who's drawing, storyboarding, writing? You know, are you into the characters? What pieces of the animation spectrum did you love and did you think you'd want to pursue? Honestly, Max, um, my mom will attest to this. We just watched a lot of Disney and it got to the point where she was like, I don't know how you're going to do anything other but draw these things. (laughs) (laughs) And were you good at it? Were you good at drawing? I mean, I was a kid, right? Everybody's good at everything when you're a kid. (laughs) I don't know about that. I still can't draw better than I did when I was five. (laughs) Stick men all the way. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But yeah, so I, um, I really wanted to draw it, but at this point, um, like we're talking 2015 ish, give or take. Right. So Disney itself had already moved out of 2d animation drawing and we're working on the 3d modeling Pixar Mm -hmm. stuff. So that's kind of where the schooling was aligned for would be the 3d. And I was totally fine with that because you're still making something that's going to touch a whole bunch of other people. Whereas in my job right now, I work bindery which is everything that happens to paper from when it's printed to when it goes out to the customer. So I coilate books, I laminate things, I cut business cards down because you don't print those on two by three, you print them Mm -hmm. on a full eight and a half by 11 sheet or bigger. Um, So I also make um, like foam core signs at events and that sort of thing. So a lot of people do see my work. They just don't know it's me because I didn't design it, but I made it. (laughs) Now, do you feel like, you know, and we're kind of jumping around here a bit, but in terms of like what you make now, you're, you've gotten into the physical side of the artistry, which is, you know, a huge part of every piece of art is the physical parameters that it exists on. Do you miss, or do you wish that you were still involved with the art side, which is what pulled you in initially to draw, to, to create on that side? I think that that would be a very hard gig to do eight hours of creative work every single day. 
Whereas mine's not as creative. It's more autopilot. So I free up my brain to think about what I'm having for supper at one in the afternoon <laughs> and all that sort of fun stuff like that. Um, I, I do miss a little bit of the creative stuff. I personally bullet journal and um, write out my life that way. So I am still creative. It's just mm-hmm. not my, I don't get paid to do it. Yeah. Now, when you first enrolled in this program, did you clearly understand that you would end up what you're doing now? Or what was the goal, you know, as you entered South Poly or SIAS at the time? I, it was to be a graphic designer, um, but I really enjoy making things with my hands. And graphic designers, um, they, they still get that opportunity, of course, but they are more digital content, right? Mm-hmm. And I like to get up and move. And I just couldn't see myself in that sort of typical desk position for years on Ever. end. Yeah. 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 <laughs> was the course hard? Was it a challenging course? Not for me. I think that when you find something that you're passionate about there, you know what, actually, let me back up. I suck at math. And my little brother, who's five (laughs) years younger than me, had to help me get through this SIAS level course (laughs) in the math. Absolutely. That was hard. Math is super hard. Um, But (laughs) other than that, like the understanding color theory and how to actually do things, that sort of stuff I live for. So I didn't find those aspects hard. But yeah, math. I will admit. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> and what was the student base like? You know, was it a good representation of women, indigenous, people of color? How was the demographics in your courses like? Um, for the years that I was there, again, it was a two-year diploma course. Um, there was eight to ten of us, I want to say, per year. Like it's a very, very tiny course. Mm-hmm. And my year was mostly women. I think we had one or two men, but I can't quite remember. This has been a while. We're coming up almost on 10 years enrollment here. So, (laughs) yeah. um, But I do know that there is a really good success rate with a a lot of the people that I graduated with are still in this industry and really enjoying their jobs still. Good, good. So now, you know, you, you were an art lover, Disney lover, which you still are. I know you are. Yeah. And you worked your way into trying to align this with your career, which is, you know, very noble and not easy to do. Well, like a lot of people, like, I mean, I wanted to be a rocket scientist. Like literally I was like, I will be a rocket scientist. And it took a long time for me. Like, I mean, I have worked kind of on a rocket now, but it was a long path there. Yeah. You, yeah. you seem pretty directed in what you wanted to do and what you wanted to achieve. So, you know, did it, did it track well for you? Was this, was the course good, you know, from where you thought to now everything's been on, on good tracks? Absolutely. Um, my childhood dream was to be a marine biologist and we live in Saskatchewan, so there's not a whole lot of stuff going around. And um, I really had to pivot real quick. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So at what point during your two years at Sask Poly, did the conversation of skills arise? Year one. Um, I don't remember when I, I want to say that the course starts in like September mm-hmm. or whatever. And then provincials is in May. So I actually yeah. competed my, or no, I didn't compete the first year. I think I watched other people compete the first year. And then in second year, I was more comfortable with what I was doing. So I mm-hmm. felt better about competing. And then I actually um, placed second provincially in 2015 for graphic design because and of that what was the um selection process like you know did the instructor just get in front of the class and say hey everyone's going to try for this and we'll see what happens or was it you know if you're interested or you know how did that work um the teachers were really kind about it and highly suggested that we attempt to <laughs> uh compete if we felt like we could do it. And obviously we all felt like we can because you just learn so much while you're at school that you get really comfortable with what you're doing, especially in second year. You're so close to graduating already. Like if you don't know what you're doing, you, you've kind of messed up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so and, yeah. At yeah. The, and how um, did that play through? Yeah. It was just really at the recommendations of our teachers that I know a lot of our group did apply to 
participate in the competition. And it does look really good on a resume, especially when you place a medal. Yeah. And what did that do to the dynamics of the class once skills is introduced in terms of competition or work or, you know, those things? I don't think that it really changed much because you're already competing with each other to get mm -hmm. like higher scores so that you can write that down on your resume anyways. And with it being such a close knit class to begin with, you just want everybody else to succeed as well. And there's not really a huge yeah. competition regarding it, right? Like it, they're only welding's pretty out. cutthroat, you know, like, it's like sabotage. But how many welders finish in a year, right? Yeah. Like, in a year, probably 70 or 80, right? Exactly. Whereas graphic communications in Saskatchewan is only spitting out 10 people. Well, that's just Regina. Right. If I look at the province, there's yeah. way more even. Yeah. Yeah. So walk us through the year that you watched. You know, what was your impression of going to check out skills for your field and even just the competition in general in terms of taking it as a year one student? The graphic design um, course is, is like so oddly specific that we just did provincials in our own classrooms and kind of just like closed the door so you could watch through the windows. You didn't have to go anywhere. So it felt really comfortable walking around because we knew all of the competitors already. And I didn't get to see the competition from other sides, like other trades and technologies, just because it was so central to me already being literally right beside me in our classroom sector. And I think that what I got out of it from watching was just that there is crazy amounts of talent when you have to focus and do one specific project. There are so many ways that it can be done, even though everything's up to code, especially when it's a creative project like graphic design. And what about, check? so you're in your room, were you able to check out the other trades, the other groups that were competing, or were you, you were just in your little bubble and that was it? Yeah, yeah, we were really, I mean, it was on floor two, I want to say, and the only other stuff, like, around the graphic design area was, I think there was some sort of, I don't know, <laughs> IT computer training thing happening across <laughs> the hallway, but we never went in there because it wasn't our area. And then I want to say there was web, web development also happening roughly in the same area, but we didn't ever talk to those people. So just, <laughs> it was just very little, secluded. Just little <laughs> trolls in there just yeah. designing away. Exactly. There'd be like music coming out every once in a while, but not not too loud to disturb anybody else. Just And yeah. what is the graphic design competition? What do you have to produce? What is it you have to make? Um, the year that I competed, we had to make a brochure and a donation box for um, like a Parks Canada type campaign. And then I think we also had to make a window, um, one of those hooky things that goes on your review mirror to show that you paid to be in the park, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And so we, you're given um, statistics uh, or not statistics. I don't remember the word. Dimensions. Yes, that one, that one. And so it'll tell you that your brochure has to be an eight and a half by 11 and it has to be a trifold. You have to include, I don't know, five pictures and then you get a folder of 20 pictures and all of the resolutions suck. So you have to make it the proper resolution because you can't print something off of a phone. It'll look like a potato. So you need the 300 <laughs> pixels per. Unless you're selling potatoes, right? Right, exactly. But even then, you want a high-definition potato. You don't want a, <laughs> a bad potato. <laughs> um, and so you get all of that, and then you get, like, some choice colors. The Parks Canada logo, I want to say it was green that year. And so we had to make sure that our color digitally matched the one that would actually print. And then once you're done designing everything, you have to actually print it and then fold it so that you're presenting the final piece of what you would actually be giving to your customer. And how precise is the folding? Like so precise that if your margins are out just by a little bit, you get docked points. It's crazy. But realistically, that's exactly what industry standard is. You're not going to pay mm -hmm. somebody a lot of money to get something that doesn't look centered once it's folded, right? Yeah. Like I, I just think of all, you know, in my normal life, 
I'm like, you know me, I'm a very anal perfectionist person. When I yep. fold a letter for somebody, I have to like make sure my corners are perfect and I have to yep. make sure that it's nice and tight. I run my nail over it so it's a nice clean yep. fold. Oh, and then yeah. some pe- sometimes you open a letter from somebody and it's like all like sideways yeah. and yeah, weird. Yeah, it's like origami and you're like, what is <laughs> happening here? And it just <laughs> makes me like get like <laughs> nauseous. It's like, no. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's so true. And what about the little parking thing? Did you have to print, print it on plastic and cut it out or... Oh. How did um, that work? That's printed on like card, not cardboard, sorry, card stock. And mm-hmm. then you have to use an X-Acto knife to cut it out because it would be like a die cut. So oh, you by can't hand. Just, yeah. Yeah. Wow. They're very serious. It's crazy. Um, the other thing I forgot about is glue tabs. So th- this is something fun where when you're making a box, you have the extra little pieces where if you're a production, you would glue it so that the box sticks together, right? Mm-hmm. These things are so easy to mess up. <laughs> because you're thinking about everything else and how the final product is that if you put the glue on the wrong side of the box and it's like covers your design on the outside, then it looks that, terrible and you have yeah. to redo it, right? <laughs> and then how much time are you given to do all this? It changes every year. Um, depends on what the specifications are. Like they're not going to make you do a brochure and three other things in only two hours, right? Like you, it just depends what they're making the competition. But you're, you're given a few hours, though. like, and it, it's probably oh, yeah. not a lot yeah. of time, but just enough. Yeah, exactly. I think at, I want to say at nationals last year they got eight hours on the first day and I think seven on the second day. Mm-hmm. So it, it's it's a tight turnaround, but it's definitely doable. Okay. So yeah. the next year now you competed, you made your, your thing and you got second. Yeah. Who got first? It was a girl named Brandy. And, and how's, I, how's she doing? I don't actually know. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I assume. <laughs> yeah. 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 Last time I saw her pop up on Facebook, she was doing really well for herself. Um, mm-hmm. She was super tall, so like I really liked her. She, she was a good person, but I yeah. just wasn't that close to her. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, was that the end of your competition window? You know, that year that you got second, were you like, that's it? Were you aged out or you were just done with the competing? The, the competition itself is super stressful. And mm-hmm. stress is a good thing when you can use it to your advantage. But I had aged out of graphic design and I knew that I loved my trade. So I didn't really want to go back to school. And now I am officially like aged out of anything, even if I did go back to school. Mm -hmm. Um, But once was enough for me. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And did you get to go to nationals with a second place? I I did, but I didn't have to compete because Brandy was first. So she had to go compete and relive the the stress all over again. I wasn't even backup, honestly. I was there for the Essential Skills Youth Forum. The mm. Saskatchewan representative had to cancel last minute and I was around. So they just asked if I would go. And I did. I had a blast. Um, the Youth Forum helps research, I suppose, a, a topic that the board of Skills Competence Canada wants to know more about. So you are a team of youth from each province and territory trying to answer a specific question. Okay. That year, I want to say it was something about um, will robotics actually help or hinder the job force once they get going? Mm-hmm. And so you do a lot of talking to people on the competition site and trying to piece together what the vast majority of anybody in a trade actually thinks about the topic. Okay, so... And then Go ahead. No, no, continue. <laughs> so that was my 2015 was the competition and the first year on the youth forum. And then the next year in 2016, I was actually brought back to be a leader for the youth forum. And so I've just been in all of these different volunteer style roles since my competition days. So I'm still able to experience the national competition and go and enjoy everything that happens there. But I don't have the stress of competing. And it, it's great. And that's exactly what I was going to ask you, you know, like yeah. once you were done with the, with the provincials, you remained, you know, you remained yeah. active with the group in a volunteer format, you know, in terms of, you know, the, the research with the youth and then 
you know, now the NAC and, and just in general, because you're, you just seem to be in a lot of places with skills helping out. Um, my question, I guess, is why, you know, when you finished competing, what was the, what was the driving factor that pulled you back into staying a part of this organization? There's a couple of things. The first one is it feels good to give back to your community. You know, like they skills itself gave me the confidence to apply for industry jobs, gave me a little note on my resume. I have a medal downstairs. Like it's all just feel good things. So I wanted to be able to pass that on to the next generation. And then I also really love traveling and nationals is never held in the same place twice or twice Twice in a a row, row. I suppose. Twice in a row. That's the key. Um, so like this year, it'll be in Winnipeg, which is not quite as, ex- as I love Winnipeg. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> I love Winnipeg. For Saskatchewan people, especially <laughs> when the Rough Riders are around, like I get it, but it's going to be a good trip. And um, the other thing that I really love is closing ceremonies when you when the comp the competitors get their medals mm. and seeing them so happy like they don't hear anything because they're just like so focused on oh my god I won to me that is the greatest thing on this planet is seeing somebody else persevere through all of their challenges in the last 48 hours and then be rewarded for it is it, it's beautiful it really I, is I can't, yeah it makes me cry every once in a while <laughs> yeah well and you know that they're just getting set up for success in Exactly. And not just the winners, like literally everyone there is getting set yeah. up for success, win or lose. Well, and you form industry connections too, with just with each other, even to be able to go out into your workforce and go, I don't know how to solve this problem. Let me call somebody from mm-hmm. Prince Edward Island, for example, just to be able to have somebody else who knows a little bit more about your trade, just like you do but has a different way of thinking is amazing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in terms of your involvement, what, what cha- made you change roles? Like, you know, you were working in this group then you were working with that group. Was it invitations just to, Hey, do you want to do this now? Or was yep. it you being like, no, I'm bored of this. I want to do something else. No, every single position I have been given the chance to participate in is because I was great at the last one and they SCC made a new position and was like, Hmm, B, are you free? (laughs) (laughs) Well, and it's a really, it's really good staff at skills. They're all really fun people to talk to and to work with. You know, they all got, uh, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a very good endeavor that they're, that they're doing. Right. Yeah, and it, it's very community orientated too. So they'll never force you to do anything if you don't feel like you want to or you're uncomfortable with it. They will ask somebody else. But the chance that they give you all of these different opportunities is fantastic in the first place. Like I personally don't like public speaking, and I'm sure that a lot of people can relate to that. But overall, I have grown so much from having the chance to go and do some public speaking with skills. I've seen you do so much public speaking and you do totally fine. Yeah. Oh, my heart is racing right now, Max. I can't even tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, what? what's the, where do you see your end goal with skills? Do you foresee yourself like many of the volunteers across Canada doing this for the next 20 to 30 years? Like I, I know people across this country who have been a part of skills for decades now. And, you know, now they're in their 40s and 50s and they're senior mentors and, and stuff like that. Do you, do you, do you want to ho- hold on to this, I mean, for the foreseeable future? I, I do, definitely for the foreseeable future. I really enjoy the happiness that comes with helping kids move up in the world. And, like, they're, everybody needs a mentor it doesn't matter if it's for life if it's for your job like you always just need somebody else who is always going to have your back and look out for your best interests so no matter what role I am in with Skills Canada I hope that people will be able to recognize that I I can be there for you even if I don't know what your trade is like I'm around (laughs) you can come Mm -hmm. talk to me you know so I, I do want to continue with Skills Canada, at least for another 10 years, probably, at least but, before well, I reevaluate. <laughs> once you start volunteering and helping, it's hard to stop. I've been doing this since I was a yeah. kid. 
And yeah. I mean, now I run a not for profit. I was literally last night at a community center helping local not for profits with their ideas because you just don't right? stop, you know, like it's, exactly. And it's really it's an fun. information exchange. It is. It is. You know, and do you do you want to mentor as a graphic designer at all? Is that no. have you have you thought? <laughs> no, I have thought about it. Mm -hmm. And and the uh, how do I word this? The technology um, like Adobe switched to the creative cloud. And so they're constantly pushing updates. And I know that I'm outdated. Yeah, so I don't <laughs> want to. It would be great to relearn just for my own self. But I don't want the pressure of having to relearn, not just for me, but for somebody else, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I can feel it. Like, and you know, the, the, to go back to your point about mentorship, it, being a mentor is a few things. I mean, there's an onus to keep up too, right? Yeah. It's, uh, it puts a little pressure on yourself as a mentor to know what's going on in industry because you also don't want to like get left behind. Exactly. Right? You and you don't you want do to give wanna... them the wrong info. Yeah. And you yeah. don't, right? There's there's <laughs> so much more to it. So, you know, as a mentor, B, do you see, you know, yourself being a part of this NAC group going forward? Do you see yourself perhaps becoming a more senior leader within the skills world? Like there's a lot of opportunity to move around in there as a volunteer. Yes. Um, so right now with the National Alumni Committee, I'm the president of the National Alumni Committee, but I'm also the president of the Saskatchewan Alumni Committee. So um, I want to say it was two years ago. I can't quite remember. All the volunteer work just kind of blurs together. Mm -hmm. hey? um, I started off just as a board member, like I was the secretary for the National Alumni Committee, and then people have moved mm -hmm. on. So I rightfully moved on up. And <laughs> I think that my role there is more of like a manager for the rest of the committee as well. So I I do find enjoyment in being I mean this sounds so mean, but like I like control. You I like am power. I'm a control freak. I like, <laughs> yes, I power trip so hard. <laughs> but seriously, I I do enjoy making sure that everybody has everything that they need in order to succeed. And so I do see myself in this role for a while longer, at least, just to. Yeah. Right? Well, I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't want you to not be around because no, we have I, a lot of fun at the conference. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, the the point of the National Alumni Committee is that each province and territory can start their own alumni committee, so that we do have volunteers who know what it's like to have competed, able to be around to assist the next competitors, right? Yeah. So I think that that's really important to me because I that's exactly what I want. So why wouldn't I want to help every other province and territory get this set up too, right? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. Now, to wrap up the interview, there's been the same couple, you know, questions that everyone's been asked. And one yeah. of them has been like pre-skills, just starting school, like in the, let's say the first three months of schooling. Yep. to now you know there's been a journey there like you said almost 10 years yeah you know and that's from you know watching competing volunteering working your way through the volunteer sector and then still being a part of the skills family the whole time what would be some of the skills that you had to learn at the beginning that you found were very key for your continued success to now definitely the ability to collaborate with other folks. Um, in my daily work life, I work in a print shop with four other people only. So we all have to be on the same page. Otherwise, things fly off the rails and it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you're always told that you have to get along with others. I mean, mm -hmm. it's true. That's why we're all told it. But I didn't really consider how far that goes in a small workplace. Yeah. And, you know, when people think of networking, they think of rooms of 300 people. But networking exactly. is also your coworker that you work with on an eight hour grind. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and it's good to have friends at work, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. Having enemies at work is the worst. Yeah. Like not yeah. getting along with a coworker is brutal. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you said, like you said, you're there for eight hours a day. You mm. you have to be by this person. You can't just get up and leave because otherwise you don't get a paycheck. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like you have to find out how to get along. 
No, and collaborations on a personal note are basically how you succeed. No one climbs exactly. alone. No one climbs alone. Yeah. And on a corporate professional basis is basically how we're going to only, it's the only way the world's going to get ahead. You know, yep. as, as the gears of the economy have evolved over the last hundred years, you know, there, we did see companies like Microsoft and like stuff just be like these giant monopolies, but that's not going to be the future going forward. Things are, are moving back to, to grassroots and, and everyone yep. needs to play together really Which is fantastic i'm mm -hmm. so excited the day that amazon goes down is gonna be a happy day <laughs> in this household <laughs> and then the last question is in terms of like your advice and, and you do this already because of your job you know you're yeah. out there giving the speeches and you're giving the talks and you're pumping kids up but for the listeners here people that maybe are thinking about going to skills and this is going to get used as a part of you know uh a lot of different groups. We're going to use it to to prep students, to prep instructors, to to get people the vibe and the excitement. What yeah. advice do you have for for the students? And second question: What's the advice you have for the mentors? You just can't give up. If this has been something that you want to do, you have to see it through. There, there is nothing that should be able to stop you from achieving your dreams. And that goes for both groups. Absolutely. It goes for everybody. <laughs> if you if you want to do something so badly that you've considered it a dream, why are you letting something stop you? There are ways around every problem. And I know that some of them are ridiculously hard. Like I, I know that we're not all billionaires. I get it. But you have to at least try. Yeah. Yeah. The emptiness you get from not trying, like the FOMO of not being a part of it is... Yeah way worse than trying yeah. and failed exactly and if you failed then you know how you would not do it again yeah. so when you go a second time you're more prepared that's amazing well b what's on track between now and winnipeg what do you got coming up i got a couple of different knack meetings just trying to get everybody on the same page so that we know where our hotel is how we're getting to the event center all that sort of fun stuff and um, I recently fractured my leg, so a lot of TV is my way. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Disney? A lot of Disney, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of The Mandalorian Season 3. And yeah. my partner is a really big Star Wars person, so he's trying to convince me to watch all, like, 88 episodes of The Clone Wars something. Mm. I, I don't know how far we're going to get there, but uh, lots of TV. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I hope your 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 broken uh, was it leg ankle? Yeah, it, it's one of the bones going into the the foot area, so it's not quite yeah. my foot. I'm not great at medical stuff. I just saw a picture of the X ray and was like, "All right, that part hurts. <laughs> I get it." <laughs> well, I I hate to see what the other guy looks like after you were done yeah. with him. So yeah, the sidewalk is still perfect condition, unfortunately. <laughs> Just well, a I hope tad you, bit icy here still. <laughs> I hope you heal up quick. I'll probably see you at Skills in Saskatoon, and I for sure will see you at Skills in Winnipeg. And uh, do you have any shout outs for anybody? Any any hellos or shout outs to anybody out there? I, I really think that I'm just really excited for having had this chat with you. And I'm very excited to work with your nonprofit because you guys do a lot of the same side of stuff that we're trying to start. So thank you for giving me an hour of your time. And thanks for your team for editing this because I know that won't be easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're good. They're good at it. <laughs> yes, yes, they are. They're perfect. So yeah, thanks again, Max. Awesome. Thank you. And for all the people that have been following along, make sure you keep on the series. We're going to have probably at least 13 in total. I, I feel like I'm going to add a couple more as I go along, but we're going to have a full series to be released and to check out every single episode. Then stay tuned for what's coming up next. Don't go anywhere. And also, hey, share them, like them, download them, spread the word. Thanks very much. And check out Skills and the CWB. We hope you enjoy the show.